Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer Practice Lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. If you like these labs, please consider supporting me via my Patreon or the cryptocurrency options in the description. Also, please subscribe to the channel for more labs like this. We're coming to the end of the ICND1 labs. In this lab, we will configure a variety of things which we learned before, and then in the next lab, We'll troubleshoot some problems with the same network topology. We will configure RIP, syslog, NAT, DHCP, and SSH. Let's get started. The first step is to configure RIP on R1, R2, and R3. Let's start on R1. Enable conf t router RIP. We're instructed to use RIP version 2 and disable auto summary. So, version 2, no auto. Now let's advertise R1's connected networks. Network 192.168.1.0, network 1.2.3.0, exit. Okay, let's go to R2. Enable, conf t, router RIP, version 2, no auto, Network 192.168.2.0, network 1.2.3.0, exit. Finally, let's go on R3. Enable conf t router rip, version 2, no auto, network 30.0.0.0, network 1.2.3.0, exit. OK, that's all for the rip configuration. It may take some time for all routes to show up in the database, but you can confirm with do show IP rip database. Step two is to configure R1, R2, and R3 to send syslog messages to server one. All we need is one command on each router to do this. Since I'm already on R3, let's start here. Logging 30.0.0.100. That's it. Logging host 30.0.0.100 would also have the same effect. Next, R2. Logging 30.0.0.100. Okay, and finally, R1. Logging 30.0.0.100. That's all for step two. The next step is to configure PAT port address translation on R1 and R2. The networks 192.168.1.0/24 and 192.168.2.0/24 are private networks, and they cannot be routed over the internet. Like in our previous NAT labs, I've pre-configured ACLs on R1, R2, and R3 to prevent them from being routed. So let's translate their addresses to the address on R1 and R2's gigabit uh, 0, 01 interfaces. Let's start here on R1. First, I'll configure the inside and outside NAT interfaces. Interface G00, IP NAT inside. Interface G01, IP NAT outside. Next, let's create the ACL to identify which traffic to translate. I'll make an ACL permitting the 192.168.1.0/24 network. Exit. Access list 1 permit 192.168.1.0.0.0.255. Okay, finally let's make the NAT statement itself. IP NAT inside source list 1 interface G01 overload. That's it. Now let's do the same thing on R2. Interface G00, IPNAT inside. Interface G01, IPNAT outside. Exit. Access list 1, permit 192.168.2.0.0.0.255. IPNAT inside, source list 1. Interface G01. Overload. That's all for our PAT configuration. However, our PCs still don't have IP addresses. So next is, con next is to configure 
R1 as a DHCP server with two DHCP pools. Since we're in global configuration mode, I'll configure the excluded address ranges first. Remember, excluded ranges aren't configured in DHCP configuration mode, but rather in global configuration mode. IP DHCP excluded address 192.168.1.1, 192.168.1.10. And for the second pool, IP DHCP excluded address 192.168.2.1, 192.168.2.10. Okay, now let's create and configure the first pool. IP DHCP pool, one pool. Network 192.168.1.0.255.255.255.0. Default router 192.168.1.1. DNS server 30.0.0.100. Exit. Okay, and now let's create the second pool. IP DHCP pool, two pool. Network 192.168.2.0.255.255.255.0. Default router 192.168.2.1. DNS server 30.0.0.100. Exit. Let's check if PC1 can get an IP address. IP config slash release. IP config slash renew. There we go. Now, how about PC4? IP config slash release. IP config slash renew. It doesn't work. Now, that's because R1 isn't connected to the 192.168.2.0 slash 24 network. So their DHCP discovery messages don't reach R1. So let's configure R2 as a DHCP relay agent. So it will relay DHCP messages between them. Interface G00. IP helper address, followed by R1's address 1.2.3.1. Exit. Now let's try again on PC4. IP config slash renew. There we go. DHCP is now working. Next, we must configure SSH access on the VTY lines of router one. Really, you should do this on all of these routers and switches, but let's keep it to just R1 for this lab. So there are a few requirements to configure SSH. One is a host name, which is already pre-configured, R1. But if it wasn't, you could configure it with this command, hostname R1. Uh, next is a domain name. Let's go with cisco.com. IP domain name, cisco.com. Also, we need a user account on this device. Username Cisco. Password CCNA. Next, we must generate an RSA key with a 1024-bit modulus. Crypto key generate RSA, then enter the modulus size here of 1024. Okay, now let's configure the VTY lines. Line VTY 015. First, let's enable local authentication. Login local. Next, let's enable SSH, transport, input, SSH, exit. Also, I forgot to configure SSH version two. So let's do that here from global configuration mode. IP SSH version two, that's it. Now let's try to SSH to R1 from PC1. SSH hyphen L, Cisco, which is the username, 192.168.1.1. Now enter the password for our account Cisco, which is CCNA. There we go, we're in. Exit. So in this lab, we did some configurations of various technologies we learned throughout these labs. Now, I will take this completed lab, 
break some of the configurations, and we'll troubleshoot it in the next and final lab of the ICND1 series. That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this, which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, let me know in the comment section. If you want to support my channel, I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a Brave Verified Publisher and accept BAT or Basic Attention Token donations in the Brave browser.